Hey, and thank you for joining the weekly show. My name's Emma, and I'm the Principal Product Specialist at Twingate. This week, we have a special guest with us, Peter. I'll hand it over to him to introduce himself. Thanks, I'm all super excited to be doing this for you. Hi, everyone. I'm Peter. I lead the customer teams here at Twingate. So why don't we get things kicked off? Emerald, today we have a very exciting topic to discuss, um, which is around AWS tags and leveraging them to make network access control changes within Twingate directly. Uh, so we'd love That's for right. you to walk us through. Yeah, we'd love for you to walk us through the demo. But before we do that, why don't you just go over the quick high level implications of what you're about to show us and why this is important? Yeah, absolutely. We have uh, more than half of our customers on AWS. This has been something that's been a much requested feature. Essentially, AWS has the ability to tag resources so you can put name value pairs on anything that you create almost. And what a lot of the, the feedback we've received over the past year and a bit was, why can't I tag um, my EC2 instance or my RDS database <clears throat> in AWS and have it automatically appear as a resource in Twingate? Why can't I set my group memberships in AWS? Awesome. Well, I'm super excited to see it. I think so many of our customers, as you pointed out, are familiar with the AWS interface. So to be able to centralize, consolidate a lot of access controls there directly, I think is a huge value add. So why don't you share your screen and let's dive into it. Okay, great. So uh, the first thing I'm gonna show you is Everything that I'm showing you today is live. It is available on our GitHub at github.com slash twingate dash labs slash TG AWS tag sync. There are instructions there on how to install it and we are working on an automated installer. So with that said, let's actually go take a look at what this thing does. So if I flip over to my Twingate admin panel, what I have here is a couple of resources in my AWS network and as usual, I can either add new resources in Twingate itself, I can edit the existing one, but what we actually wanna to do today is manage this list of resources and its group assignments from within AWS. So I'm gonna flip over to my EC2 management console. And just for today's example, I'm going to take a look at uh, an EC2 instance that I have here. You can see that it's got a private IP address and it's got the name TagSync Demo1. What I'm gonna do is click on the tags and just to remind everyone how this is gonna work, I can create a key called TG underscore resource. And I, the first thing I can do is put in the name of a remote network. So I'll add this key by going into manage tags, add new tag. And in the value- no, as, as you're doing this, if you don't me, mind me asking you a question, as you're doing this, if you don't mind me interrupting you, ML. Um, why why would you do this through your identity provider? Because I'm, I'm fairly certain platforms like Okta allow you to do this within their world. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So it, it is very standard practice. If you have an identity provider to drive your groups via that mechanism, the issue is organizationally, a lot of uh, customers are not using Okta beyond you know at the resource level to define what resources technically people can access they may be using them to sort of group group things by by department or by role but not at, at zero trust level let's say got it got it so this allows you to get a lot more granular at the application level and not just at, broadly yes. at the group yeah. level is that what you're saying absolutely in in a lot of cases the people that are creating these resources inside aws are not Okta admins. And if they're not Okta that admins, don't have the rights to go and create groups, how are they going to manage them? That makes sense. Okay, great. So Sorry I interrupted you there, Emerald. Yeah. That's okay. That's okay. You can see what I did was I added a tag called TG underscore resource, and I just put in the name of the remote network that I want it associated with. And what has happened is we have a Lambda function that's listening to ch tag change events in AWS. And that Lambda function picked up the fact that we added a TG resource tag and it went and created the resource in Twingate automatically. So if I refresh this page, I can see that that there resource is. has appeared. Okay. Very simple. And also, that was really quick too. Oh, yeah. The Lambda runs within milliseconds, I think, in, in most cases. 
And then what's wow. happened is the Lambda has created the resource and it's actually cross-linked the resource ID back into this tag. So if I do want to do further scripting on this resource, I actually have that metadata inside AWS. Very cool, very cool. Well, one more question, Emil, because a lot of our constituents and customers, as you know, love the Terraform provider and are all about IAC, infrastructure as code. So why wouldn't we just use Terraform for this? So, some customers do, and that is perfectly valid. Uh, for other customers, Terraform and Pulumi are not the right place to be setting groups. So what happens is you might sort of rigid, rigidly define your infrastructure concerns, and that would include which VMs you're running, which databases, which VPCs, but groups can change over time and you don't want to rerun your Terraform when group assignments change. Now this varies by organization. For some organizations, that is absolutely no problem. For other organizations, it's a huge stumbling block. They cannot adopt Terraform to manage groups when they need this sort of frequent change uh, that is completely opposing what Terraform would normally be used for. Got it, got it. Would you also say, I mean, there's different personnel as well, right? There's some folks who are more comfortable in Terraform, some would rather do everything within AWS. So this probably just allows you to be a little bit more flexible depending on, to your words, you know, what each organization and team needs. Absolutely. Same, same thing as the identity provider, by the way. The people managing the infrastructure may not be the people that are managing the group assignments. And so Terraform is not always the, the best place to do this. Um, but what, what, what I haven't shown you, by the way, is I've added the resource here, but I actually haven't defined any, any access controls. So you can see this is not you know, currently blank. And there is also capability to add groups. So I can use the Very TG cool. groups key. And let's just take a quick look at how to do that. So I'm going to go to team groups, see what groups I've got. So say I want to give my DB admins access to this resource. I can actually just go back to manage tags, add a new tag called TG groups, and I'll just call it DB admins. Okay. Same thing will happen, hopefully. The Lambda will run in the background, pick up the change, and synchronize it to Twingate. So if I go back to my network, and I look at this resource, you can see DB admins has just appeared. Very cool. Okay, that, that happened within a few seconds. So for teams that are frequently in AWS Management Console, they've maybe got investments in scripting AWS, using all sorts of, um, of the AWS APIs, management APIs, this is absolutely a no-brainer. Wow, this is amazing. Well, thanks for showing this to us, Emma. Anything else you want to show us around this or anything up and coming in terms of other capabilities with AWS specifically you want to tease our audience with? Yeah, I mean, that. Absolutely. There's a lot, there's a lot here. So let, let me just run you through it. Um, you saw me add the remote network name. You can override the resource name and resource address, which you may want to do if you're using route 53. And at the bottom, we have a list of um, what is and isn't supported. So let's take a quick look. We support um, ECS, we support RDS, we support EC2. We're looking at, you know, getting some customer feedback and seeing what we need to support next. But actually between the three of these, I think we've got a lot of our bases covered. Very cool. Well, I know, again, this is a very highly requested feature from our customer base. So thanks for you and your team working on this. Um, for, for our listeners, we also do have an AWS marketplace listing. So you can actually transact directly through the marketplace to work with us at Twingate. So we're really looking forward to um, seeing you all there. And thanks again, Emerald, for walking us through this amazing demo. I think really shows the value of being able to, you know, the flexibility of our API and being able to do things outside of Twingate that still propagates to our platform. So appreciate you showing us this. Thank you, Peter. Until next time.